So let's take a look at this uh, typical way in which we're going to do a, uh, it's a skid uh, with a flange wrapped uh, beam on it. And the only thing that I got from my boss was this little sheet of paper that says that the uh, center of that uh, cylindrical pipe needs to be uh, 8 inches from the, uh, the end of the beam. And then this is going to be a separate part that's going to wrap up uh, around that part. And then we'll weld it all in. So let's get started. We're going to start in SolidWorks with a new part file. And for this I'm just going to start a sketch on the uh, top plane. And we'll just use the rectangle command. I want everything centered, so I'm going to use a centered rectangle. And just kind of drag it out. This is a very large, so I'm going to use my mouse gestures to get a, a dimension. And this guy is going to be 65 feet. We'll go ahead and zoom extents. And this is going to be 6.5 feet. So these are my main centers. I'm going to make those uh, vertical lines construction. And then I've got some other beams in here. So again, we'll use a rectangle centered. Go ahead and put some dimensions on this. And it's going to be 744 by 138.375. And then I've got one extra little uh, bit of beams that's going to come down through here and hold this together. And I'm just going to use the line command. Uh, it's not actually centered, so I'm not going to come off of the center point there. But I'm creating three separate lines. So you can kind of see they can all move together. I'm we'll going to mention these guys from the end. Make that 360. And our last little bit of cleanup is uh, this line. I actually need it split up into uh, three different sections, just like that center line that I put in there. Uh, so to do it, I'm just going to right click on it and do split entities. And I'm just going to pick two points out here. We'll go into select mode and then we'll drag them back down, make them coincident to those, uh, those horizontal beams. And I need to do the same thing on the other side. So again, right click, split entities, just pick two points just somewhere out there in space, and then we'll drag those down. So we've got three separate members there. Okay, with that I'm ready to uh, create my beams. So we'll hop out of the sketch mode, and we'll go into weld mitts and do a structural member. And we're going to use that ANSI inch, and use a W section. And we're going to use a 12 by 35. And I'm going to start with my big long sections first. And I'm, I'm just going to use the center of the beam. I think that'll, that'll work out pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and pick on all four of these guys. They're all the same, same thing in the same group. Um, as long as I'm in the same feature, everything is going to uh, trim up. But uh, I have to create some of these as different groups. So I'm going to do a new group. Go ahead and select on all three of these, and kind of zoom in and make sure that you know they're they're actually splitting off and they're cutting where they're supposed to. Uh, if they don't, you can select on the uh, little corner treatment button and select an, another little uh, section. But uh, these look like they're doing pretty good, so I'm gonna leave them alone. Uh, I do have to create two more groups, so I'm gonna do a new group and just do a pick, pick, pick. Do another new group and pick 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 there we go we'll go ahead and say OK and then we'll visually take a look at the uh, the corner treatments and make sure that uh, I didn't split any of my long beams in here so everything seems to seems to look pretty good everything trimmed up pretty well next I want to uh, sketch kind of on the middle of this thing so I'm going to go ahead and sketch on uh, my front plane, and we'll do a new sketch. And I'm going to zoom in over here in the corner, and I'm going to go ahead and save this view. I'm going to do the, uh, quite a bit of work on this view. So I'm going to hit the space bar, hit the second little button there, new view, and I'm just going to call this V1 or View 1. Now I don't have a lot of views in here, so I can keep it pretty generic. All right, I'm going to create a circle. 
just somewhere on that end of that profile, which this is 18 inches from this guy to this guy. And I know that my dimension for the outside diameter is uh, 4.5 inches. Okay. The other thing that I know is that that pipe needs to live directly underneath that flange. So I'm going to hold down Control, select both those entities, and make a tangent relationship. And that completely fixes that circle in there. Okay. Then I need to uh, go from the circle down to this flange point. So I'll just get the line command. And when I'm on the edge of the circle, if I click and drag it, I'll actually get a tangent based line. So I'm going to go all the way down to this point. Looks good. And then I'll go ahead and do my geometry here. I'll go ahead and go here. And I'm going to go up at some weird little angle here. And then I'm going to go from here. Up here, I want this to be parallel. And then I'm going to go to the end point, just touch it, come back around and I'll pick up that endpoint on that flange. So then we'll go into select mode, we'll select both these guys, make them concentric. That should kind of straighten these guys out a little bit. And then I've got to finish up my little uh, geometry down here. So we'll drag that out. And really the main thing is that when I cut this piece of met material, it's actually perpendicular to these two guys. So make that perpendicular and I'll click that guy and make him construction. He's not really going to be part of my, my geometry there. All right. The only other thing I need to do is to uh, finish this guy up. I'll just get the line command and we'll go from corner to top quadrant. I'll go ahead and turn this guy into construction. And I'll just put an arc from endpoint to endpoint to tangent. And that should fully define my, uh, my sketch there. It looks pretty good. Now I will use this sketch a little bit later, but I'm also going to use this pretty much as my master sketch uh, for some of these other uh, features that i got to create. So I'm going to hop out of the sketch right there. And first thing I'm going to do is I need to cut some of these welded, uh, these uh, beams, uh, and I'm going to use some of this master sketch to do it. So let's go back to uh, do a new sketch on that front plane. I'm going to hit my space bar and click on V1. It takes me back to where I was. And I need to cut the... Uh, the beam on this this guy right here so I'm going to convert entities and then I'm also going to create a line and go from this endpoint down to this endpoint go back into select mode so the really the only two things I have in this sketch is this uh, diagonal line and that that vertical line there okay with that we can go right into the extrude cut and the only thing I need to do is watch for my feature scope I'm going to go ahead and tell it I only want to go through these these members and then I got to take a look at this little arrow guy right there on which way he's going to flip it. So if I flip it the wrong way, notice that the whole thing goes away. So let's go back out of that feature and I'm going to say flip side to cut. You'll see that arrow goes to the other side. It's this little arrow right there. And now when I hit OK, it trims off exactly what I want there. So I got a nice little cut, you know, on that little uh, flange. Alright, next I need to do the uh, the cut for the, the pipe It's going to go through. So kind of the same technique, I'm going to sketch on the front plane, do a new sketch. Hit the space bar, go to V1. And I'm going to steal that geometry, so just select it and say convert entities. That converts it to normal geometry, so now I can go ahead and just do an extrude cut. Now this is a solid profile, so I'm going to do a through all. But I not only have to go out in that direction, I'm going to turn on direction 2. So it goes through all in that direction as well. So uh, I could go ahead and select these bodies too if I want. Go ahead and say OK. And we get our nice little cut through there. So next I need to create the pipe itself. And there's two ways that I can do it. Uh, one is I can sketch on the front plane again. Go back to V1. I can select on that, do convert entities. And then I can, of course, create a circle on the inside of this. Put a dimension here for whatever the pipe thickness is. And then we can extrude this. Uh, we can do this guy mid-plane. And do 216. So I got a nice big uh, pipe member through there. Uh, so that's one way to do it. Now, if if I didn't want to do that and I wanted to actually pull 
the right size pipe from uh, the weldments profile, uh, then we could do this a little bit different way. So let's right click, I'm going to delete that and get rid of the sketch. And to do that, I need to create a 3D sketch. I need to just put a sketch out there. Uh, I could create a plane and then just do a 2D sketch, but it's a little bit funner to do a 3D one. So let's do that. I'm going to hit the drop down, we'll do a 3D sketch. And I'm just going to draw a line out in, out in the middle of nowhere, just in crazy land. The only thing that I care about is that, is that it's lined up on the Z axis. So I'm going to have to hit the tab key. And I'll just draw a pretty good size uh, line out here and make sure I just got it in the Z direction. I'll right click, go into select. If you've missed it and you've got it along the wrong direction, then you can just apply a long Z uh, as a, a relationship. So next I'm going to select on the line, hold down control, and I'm going to select on the center point of that, and we're going to make that coincident. Now normally what that does is it drops one of the endpoints to that center of that circle. Okay, But the good thing is you can always drag that and just pull it off if you want. So if this is completely uh, uh, at a mid-plane, then we can dimension this guy, make him 216 again, and then I can dimension him to the center of that circle, and I'll just do 216 divided by 2. So now you can see I've got a line out there, it's completely centered uh, through, that, through that center of that circle there. So if the center of the circle moves, then of course this line is going to move along with it. And this gives me the option to where I can change it off a little bit and go one direction, not the other. All right, and that's pretty much it. I've got my sketch. So we'll go to uh, Weldments, Structural Member. We'll go and pick on that guy, but of course it's not a welded W section. It's going to be a pipe. I believe it's a S40. And it's a 4-inch. And I think that'll fit. So we'll go ahead and say OK. We'll go ahead and hide our uh, 3D sketch. And I'll go ahead and hide my sketch one. So next I need to create the little wrap part. And to do that, I'm actually going to sketch on the side of this profile because I want it the same length of this flange. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new sketch on that face. Again, hit the space bar and go to V1. And then I want the entire sketch 12. So I'm going to pre-select that in the browser I want to hit convert entities, then it automatically projects that to the sketch plane. So let's rotate around. So you can see I get all that information that existed on that at that centered sketch uh, out here on this one. So now I can just use this guy to go ahead and just do extrude. And I'm going to go up to surface. Go ahead and rotate around a little bit. Pick on this back face. So I started sketching on here. I'm going to finish there. We'll go ahead and say OK and that gets us our little wrapped part there. So now I can turn my centered sketch off and I just need to put my little end caps on here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, do a new sketch, get in spacebar V, and I'll go ahead and steal, uh, actually I just need a, a circle. I don't have the center point so just kind of rub up against that little edge there. That'll wake the center point so I can start there, drag that out, and give it a dimension make that 7 and then we'll do an extrude and we're we'll sure this just a half inch half inch steel plate alright so now I've got all these pieces and I just need them on the other side it's a good thing that this is mirrored and halfway through the part so I, I need to do a couple different things so let's go ahead and mirror on the uh, mirror facer plane I'm gonna select on the front plane and then make sure you do bodies to mirror on this. And I'm just going to select on these two bodies. Uh, make sure your preview looks good. And then just go ahead and accept that. So that looks good. Uh, before I do this on the other side, so down here, I actually have to do my cuts first. So I'm going to have to do this, this mirror in uh, two different sections. And the reason is because one, I'm going to do features to mirror. And then the second one, I'm going to do bo uh, bodies to mirror. So first features to mirror, I'm just going to select the cuts out of the uh, dialog box, the feature tree. And then for the mirror facer plane, select on the right side plane. You can see the little preview. I'll say OK. And then the next we're going to do mirror. This one's going to be bodies to mirror. And I'm going to select on, 
all these and then my mirror plane is going to be my right side plane so I'll go ahead and say okay and so now I've got this uh, axle on on the left side and on the right side so so always remember to uh, take a look at your cuts list uh, right click and update it so that way everything that's uh, the same size and length is combined and of course make sure that some of your properties are correct and you have the right prop, uh, stock numbers and things on your on your items so that should do it so just make sure you save your work and make your boss happy enjoy